Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth, Romans 8, 9, and 10 today. So if you remember, we've been coming off the idea of, um, no, I was going to say a discussion, but really these letters to the Romans uh, regarding what justification in Christ looks like. This idea of being slaves to Christ or being dead in our sin and yet alive through Christ. So um, Paul continues to talk about that. Um, beyond that, today, we are looking at the freedom that we have in Christ, uh, the idea of sonship, so adopted sons, uh, Israel's rejection of Christ, and desperate need of the gospel. So all of that in Romans 8, 9, and 10. So we will start at chapter 8. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemn, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we are also first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, he predestined those, moreover, he predestined those he also called, whom he called, those he also justified, whom he justified, those he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not, how, excuse me, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? 
It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, who even at the right hand of God also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Chapter 9. I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying, my conscience, conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, the eternally blessed God. Amen. But it is not the word of God that has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children, because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is, those who are children of the flesh these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. For this is the word of the promise. At this time, I will come to Sarah. I will come and Sarah shall have a son. <clears throat> and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for children have not yet been born, nor having done any good or evil, that purpose, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not the works of him who calls. It was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. But, as it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. What shall we say then? Is there any unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So, then, is it not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy? For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills, and on whom he wills, he hardens. You will say to me, then, why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who forms it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he says also in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and her beloved who is not my beloved. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. There they shall be called the sons of the living God. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Through the num Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. And Isaiah said before, Unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we would have become like Sodom, and we would have been made like Gomorrah. What shall we say then? The Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness? Why? because they did not seek it by faith, but, as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Chapter 10. Excuse me, sorry. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for, of, excuse me, prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. 
For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to who to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the earth. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I've stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. So 818 is what uh, stood out to me. 818 says, uh, where are we? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So all of this seems to really hint at a hard road, right? Um, Jesus says people are going to hate you for uh, speaking the gospel. And you may be experiencing some of that. Paul certainly did. However, even as he acknowledges it here and says, I consider this to be incomparable, just minuscule to what we will experience. And that's got to give you hope. I know it, it gave him hope or he would not have mentioned it. Um, I think that's really interesting. So I don't know what you may have been through in your life, um, how easy or how difficult, um, but Paul had a tough life. Paul had a tough life being whipped or scourged, uh, the Bible says, uh, being shipwrecked and beaten and imprisoned and stoned. So many just crazy, terrible things. And yet he had hope in that, looking at the end of the race and looking at that finish line. So whatever you're going through, um, you know, the, the holiday season is typically uh, supposed to be magical or full of family. Uh, and maybe it is your family that's... Uh, that it's causing stress or consternation, if that's the right word. Um, but we look again to the end of the race, that at the end of all things, all of this will seem as nothing. And that's pretty awesome. Anyway, that is what I was left with. As always, friends, know that I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you.